voices to the media, to your twisted, immoral society, and your communist government. We hate you all, and we are ready for war. We will always speak up and expose the corruption, the authoritarianism, the tyranny, and the hate. Truth dispels lies as light dispels darkness. From an undisclosed location, deep in an occupied zone, you are listening to Covert Radio. How you guys doing? This is Covert Radio. And this is Brutally Honest, Fearlessly Unapologetic Talk Radio. And uh, we're just going to jump right into it here. This is um, one, of, one of the first times I'm able to sit a little bit longer than about 10 or 15 minutes, so... We'll see how this goes. I had a back injury, unless you, you uh, did not get to hear the last video of Covert Radio. Uh, I want to give a shout out to all the uh, Covert Radio patrons. Um, for the new people, rest assured, I will have your perks out here uh, probably tonight. I'm going to see how this goes, and then um, I'll, I'll get that stuff over to you new guys. I have a lot of updates, too, on the Covert Radio Discord server. It's private. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I have an exclusive. I don't even know if I, I don't even know if I should tell you guys here. This is, this is, uh, this is exclusive stuff. I mean, eh, you know what? I might save it, but just let me give you a little teaser. Um, I may have connected with, well, you know, I, I get a lot of emails a, a day, you know, and I, I get, Sometimes I, I don't have the um, wherewithal to go through them. Um, and then some days I'm just like, I got to get to emails. And I'm talking one of like seven accounts. So, you know, uh, but but I found an email in uh, for Covert Radio. And supposedly uh, this person had went to school with Owen and... Um, they want to have a conversation. You know, mysteriously, there's a, a gap of information that Owen chooses to leave out of his uh, Wikipedia or his even own bio, his own history. But this person here is going to fill in the blanks. Now, you know, I don't want to make any promises because they they have old pictures. They, they, they give me old pictures, you know, um, we're talking grade school and high school. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm going to put it out there. I, I can't, I'm not going to verify a hundred percent that it's not satire, but I mean, uh, well, you know, we'll see, we'll see, but that's going to be a very, very good conversation. And for those of you who don't know who the entity on the screen is, his name is, Owen Benjamin, Owen Benjamin, who uh, was a comedian about 10 or 15 years ago, and uh, he's on a um, he's on a grift mission. Check out some videos on Covert Radio if you want to get up to speed. Uh, he is a public figure. This is a um, legal obligation. Uh, the covert radio has to be critical and scrutinize what this entity is doing because he is using public platforms to carry out the grip. So, you know, you can't have it all, all ways. You can't have it all ways. You're, you know, he has to be public. He has to continue to be public. So, you know, that information will be continuously scrutinized and criticized and put under the microscope. That's that. So, we're going to get into a video here. I'm going to try to choke it down. Uh, I, 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 it's hard for me to do this because I can't stand frauds. 
I can't stand liars. I cannot stand narcissists. I don't like people who think they're smarter than you, who think they're going to take advantage of other people, who may not have the ears to see, uh, or I'm sorry, the ears to hear and the eyes to see. So, you know, I have a very, I don't have really any tolerance for that. Just like junkies. I, I don't have any tolerance for junkies because it's a choice. I mean, who would who wouldn't want to get destroyed every day? Like seriously, why should I feel bad for you? Well, let's see here, dude. You get high as a kite every single day. You don't work. You've given up on all your responsibilities. And I'm supposed to feel sorry for you. Why? I don't. I don't. But I do want to tell you guys a story. Again, this is Covert Radio. This is long play radio format. This is talk radio format. Uh, you can put covert radio on. It's uh, something you can just hit play and go go about your way. Hook me up to your Bluetooth speakers, your headphones, your earbuds. Put the phone down or put it in your pocket and do do what you were doing. We're going to multitask. I don't need you to stare at the screen. You can just listen. If I do need you to take a look at the screen, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, can you guys take a look at your screen there? This is Compound Media. So, um, but again, for the most part, it's long play radio format, but I do want to tell you guys a story and, um, I don't lie. I don't believe in lying. Um, it's, it's a waste of time. I'm brutally honest. I'm fearlessly unapologetic because I want that reciprocated to me. I want you to be brutally honest with me. And I want you to be fearlessly unapologetic to me. And I believe that's how people grow. That's how you learn. That's how you get better. So I'm going to tell you a story. Rest assured, this is 100% true. There are going to be some people listening to this who know exactly who I'm talking about. But I may change the names. Well, I have to change the names. So uh, that's the only thing that's, that's not true about this. And it's just, it's not a long story. It's just a segue into what I want to talk about. The title of this video, first off, is going to be something like, Is God Punishing Owen Benjamin? You know, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in Jesus Christ or Allah or Buddha or whoever, whatever, you know, um, there's zero doubt that there is a creator something created this something designed this this is intelligently designed you can call it god aix the simulacrum the simulation this is a design we may be in a simulation but again somebody designed it okay and i truly believe the yin yang the yin and the yang is uh, a really real Uh, representation of life and you cannot you cannot put out and not receive I really believe it at the very bare minimum of life balance is something that is is uh, a constant underlying um, consequence so we're going to talk about balance here for one second. I'm going to tell you a story because it's very possible that God, the creator, is punishing Owen ben Hamin, And it's just starting. It's just starting. You know, you can't open your mouth every day and keep the lies straight, keep the manipulation straight. It's just not going to happen. His window of opportunity is closing every day. It's not opening. It's not getting bigger. It is closing. He had a great opportunity and he blew it. That is just it. That's the end. But that's not the end for people who are sociopaths, for people who are narcissistic. Um, The characteristics, we've gone over this ad nauseum on covert radio. Um, there's many mental health issues here and conditions and it, it, it all points to narcissism, sociopath, uh, psychopathy. There's, 
there's zero doubt in my mind. The, the sense of entitlement, I mean, the grandiose sense of, of self-importance that just the arrogance is, is sickening. The arrogance is sickening. The sense of entitlement. You know, and with all of these things, you you cannot say that you have empathy. Because all of it, the constant admiration, the need for attention, the, be- the belief that you're better than everyone, that you're better than average people. You know, how many times he has called these bear tards, the people who give him money every day, they're stupid. I mean, I have recordings of him calling them stupid. They're idiots. With all of those narcissistic, grandiose, like this personality disorder, you cannot say, I, I, yeah, you know, covert radio. Yeah, I have all of that, except I'm very, I'm an empath. I mean, I'm very empathetic to the struggle of the average man. I'm very empathetic. No, 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 no. If anything, an average narcissist would have empathy. Well, I'm I'm saying at their level, which is maybe three, two, three percent, somewhere out of, say, an average person, a high 80, 90 percent. We're talking about somebody who has the biggest chip on his shoulder because of daddy. Daddy hurt him. Men hurt him. So not only is the narcissism causing low empathy, but the fact that he believes that, you know, this chip of like, well, I've been hurt, so I'm going to hurt. It's it's so subconscious and automatic that it's psychotic. Don't want to get into that. This is, a you know, and actually I'm getting bored with this. You guys know, you guys know, this is just for the newer people to bring you up to speed. And I'm not even getting into this anymore. I want to tell you a story, okay? This is about actually another narcissist who I uh, was was friends with through an initial work agreement. And then we became friends. And it's just, you know, see, for me, I I, it's entertainment. Like, I enjoy being... I've said this before. I love cocky people. I love cocky people. I love being around them. I am cocky myself. But... I have a litmus test. I will test you. I will test you. And if I, if you can prove to me on my own litmus test, if you can prove to me you've earned to be who you are, I I have nothing but respect for you. It's the people like this entity on the screen who has not earned the level of arrogance that they portray is beyond my chart of like just it, I don't want to call it hatred. I don't know what the word is. Disgust. It's a mixture of disgust, hatred. Like I, I just I cannot stand people like Owen Benjamin. I can't stand them. But I was friend. I have several friends who are nor. Oh, I have several friends who are narcissists. Nobody's normal. You know what I mean? That's the thing, too. Nobody is normal. There is no such th- <laughs> There's no such thing. And it's only getting worse. You know, actually, I was just talking about... <laughs> I was just talking about this today. Uh, I had a doctor's appointment for my back. And me and these, like, two... One guy was 62. One dude was, like, 50-some... And there was this young kid sitting there with like flowered pants on and he had like all these emblems on his shoes and you could, he's 20, low twenties, maybe 23. And, uh, me, me and the old men, you know, we're talking about how it used to be, you know what I mean? And that, (laughs) that's torture, you know what I mean? For young kids. But, uh, what was I saying? What were we talking about? Um, Oh, nobody's normal. Yeah. So I was like, um, I said, here's what's crazy. Cause I, I, well, I can't even get into this. I have a little friend, she's 18 and she's like, she's like covert radio, you know, cause we talk, she's my neighbor. And, um, she goes, I mean, we've been friends for years. Well, about four years, but she's like, um, 
She's like, I, I swear to God, she's like, you're you're seriously my therapist. She's like, you're like my therapist. And she will, she texts me constantly. She texts me, for, she's a, a senior this year. It's a whole thing. I'm not getting into it. But I really genuinely feel responsible for her. I really am her therapist. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I really, truly, cause, cause she has had a hard life and it's very, very, very sad. What's all that's happened. Mom's a, a, a junkie. Dad is probably working with about a 70, 68 level IQ. Um, it, it's very, very, very disheartening. You know, it's a daddy thing mixed in with a listen to me thing mixed in with a therapy thing mixed in with a bunch of things. So well, I can't even believe I'm getting it. Anyway, we're, we're talking at the doctor's office today. Me and the old men are talking, you know, like I said, 162, one's in their fifties and there's this young kid sitting there and we're just going on and on and how it used to be and da, da, da. Okay. And I said, you know, what's crazy to me? This is the most, this is the most insane thing. I think, but believe me, we covered the gamut of insanity, but I said, this is truly from our generations down to the, this guy sitting here. I said, this is what's most astounding to me. I said, the fact that mental illness really is something to brag about now. And it's so true. And and I think only if you have young kids younger than say 20 or 30, I'd say 28 or 30 years old, uh, really millennials kind of really, uh, you know, we're at the tail end of this, but definitely the Zoomers. Like it's it's a badge of honor to have a grocery list of mental disorders. And, you know, just like this young girl who is constantly suicidal, she's constantly like drama, drama, drama. Like it's always something insane. And it's like, but but I know her some of her friends too, and they're all lunatics. Like they all are just bent on, well, yeah, I got to see my, my, it's crazy. They're all on meds. And I'm saying there's a lot of, there's millions and millions and millions of kids like this. Really in America, uh, it's, it's at epidemic levels. And again, you don't know this unless you have younger kids or unless you're paying attention to that. But uh, I that's just the insane part to me. It's like now it's cool to have a mental disease. It's cool to be suicidal. It's, you know, they started normalizing it with cutting with the millennials, cutting and emo and death. And it's just a, you know, the people that are running this, the controllers, they literally are the synagogue of Satan. They truly are of their father, the devil. Truly. I have actually a big video coming about this, up about this, about Philip Morris and uh, a, a few other things and how the tribe took it over very early. It's a whole thing. Anyway, I don't want to get lost because I know I am. But let's talk about a story I want to tell you really quickly. And then we're going to get into this video. With a narcissist, one of my friends that I, he, he became a friend. I worked for him. Well, I did projects for him, put it that way. But anyway, he, uh, this dude I knew of him back in the day. He went to a different school and everything. I'm talking 30 some years ago. He went to a different high school, but I knew of him because of football. And, you know, it's like, it's this whole thing. And he, he literally was, Oh, the valedictorian or whatever. And he's like the top within the top 10 of the cool dudes, you know, him and his crew, we all hated him. You know what I mean? My friends from another area, we all, we couldn't stand him or his friends. You know, it was a big rivalry and shit, especially with football and stuff. So anyway, uh, he uh, he had an office and uh, well, it was a building, but, you know, he had his office there and everything. And uh, but, but he also had a side business. Well, not getting into it. But anyway, we'd go there at night and, and do some work. And um, it was all media related. But he, he told me one time, he's like covert. He's like, uh, my wife's pregnant. <laughs> and I said, what? He said, yeah, bro. He's like, I'm going to be a dad. I was like, oh, damn, man. Congratulations. And it immediately hit me like a ton of bricks. And it just fell out of my mouth. And I from I think really from this moment on, I, I, our, our kind of friendship, whatever, changed because it just fell out of my mouth. I said, I said, you know what's 
what could I call him? I'll call him Scott. I'll be like, you know what's crazy, Scott? I'm, I'm telling, I have a feeling in, in my heart, dude. God is going to punish you with a daughter. God is going to punish you with a daughter. And he didn't know how to take that. And, and he was just like, I couldn't tell if he was pissed, confused, all of the above. And he's like, what, what do you mean punish? Because, you know, he's a Catholic too. Uh, like Owen is, was. I said, here's what I mean, Scott. I know all about you, dude. I know all about your, you know, your, you, your boys. I know about a lot of things you don't know I know about because the reality is I was really good friends with some dudes from his school. So, you know, again, uh, you know, as you get older, your, your world gets smaller and then names come up and stories come up. And I found out a lot about this dude. And you want to talk about unempathetic womanizer. I'm saying rape, all, I don't think existed back then. I mean, I know it did, but it was a different thing. This was pr way prior that to Me Too. But, you know, even with my daughters, um, and I, I don't care what you think of me, but I'm going to tell you something that I've constantly said to my wife, uh, and and I may they may have overheard it. But I've definitely told both of them. I said two things. And I've been grooming them literally since they were young. I said, there's two things. You don't ever want to be the fat girl. And you don't ever want to be, well, there's three things. You don't want to be the fat girl. You don't want to be the fat girl at the party. And you never, ever, ever want to be the last girl at the party. It's a di it was a different time then, you know, and I'm not talking about centuries. I mean, we're talking 90s, <laughs> 90s into the 2000s, okay? But it really was a different world. Pre-9-11, you know, right, right those several years past that. Because the things I've witnessed are, are just, to this day, I feel sorrow because there have been girls completely victimized. And really, some of you listening to me right now, some of you girls, some of you women listening to me, you may be one of them. See, women have a, a very uncanny capability of compartmentalization. And, you know, you may have tucked it way, way back, but, or maybe you've convinced yourself you wanted things to happen like that. But, you know, I'm not going to get graphic or anything, but I've seen it all. And, and, you know, I've seen the drunk girl at the party. I've seen the girl who doesn't get attention. Maybe she is the fat girl, but now all of a sudden she's getting a lot of drunk guys attention. And this was Scott and his friends. There was, there was no, there was no, um, I don't know how to explain it without getting crazy, but it's almost like an animal and uh he he was one of the worst ever womanizers non empathetic womanizers ever that i've ever known and uh he never denied any of the stories and he actually told me stories i never even heard and i just you know and part of me is like my eyebrows are, are raised part of me's disgusted and part of me's intrigued and I, I could in my heart, I could not help to think about these girls and now being a father and just for my daughter to, my, to go through something like that. That's why at a young age, I started telling them those three things I told you. Because I know what happens and I know what can happen. And I know the unempathetic narcissists possibly soulless entities like Scott and his buddies and the entity on this screen who do things like that. So I said, God is going to punish you and you're going to have a daughter and then you're going to wait up at night. You're going to wonder why she's crying. You're going to wonder why five guys dropped her off at the end of the block and maybe she can't find her underwear or her bra. You're going to be up sick at night thinking what guys possibly are doing. He's going to punish you, Scott, for everything you've done. 
He had a bouncing baby girl nine months later. The last time I seen him, he had gray hair and he gained about, I'm not kidding you, 200, 250 pounds. There is balance, Owen Benjamin. There is balance. The covert radio tribunal is coming. It's here. And we're only growing. And we're watching. And I'm reporting. And I'm observing. Redemption draweth nigh. Here we go. Let's hit play. Yeah. Hi, everybody. What's going on? I just got uh, sorry for being a little late. I was getting a haircut uh, by my beautiful wife, the only uh, human being that's cut my hair in uh, 10 years. So that's a good way to save some coin and not have a complete stranger have a sharp object near your neck. So today, I have a, a good one for you today. I don't have a ton of material, but I have uh, some insights I thought I should share. Uh, share. One, I think I understand the purpose of the Stop Anti-Semitism movement, uh, these organizations, the ADL, all this stuff. Uh, me and my buddy were watching the, the new special last night, and guys, it's so good. It's so good. I can't believe how good it turned out. Uh, I can't wait for you guys to see it. And... Um, yeah, I'm just so honored that all you guys helped out. And so many people behind the scenes. Like when you watch the special, and I, I'm not overblowing it, guys. It's going to blow your mind. It's so likable and genuine and fun and funny and relevant. You know, I, I have seen whatever he's released. And I, I'm not being mean. I'm just, I swear to God, I'm being honest. It's garbage. It's garbage. I mean, there's nothing funny there, but really, I think also my perception of it is based from a, a, a sort of an elevated view of what put this together. Now, maybe uh, there might be something laughable if I didn't know how this came to be, if I didn't understand what's the driving force behind this the stage that he didn't pay for, like, you know what I mean? There's so much that is um, not funny that it overshadows what he believes or he's trying to convince you is funny. 98% of what caused him to stand on that stage, none of it is funny. But he he's continuously, and I mean, I guess anybody would do this, I'm telling you, it's so funny, guys. I mean, I'm not even lying about this, uh, but, it, but it's so funny. I, I mean, whatever. I, I mean, uh, c clearly he's not going to say it's garbage because this is another. Do you think he's going to put this out for free? This is another grift. Do you think he's going to put this out for free? Lighting paid for by someone else. Cameras paid for by somebody else. Stage paid for electric paid for <laughs> i mean the tent it was all paid for by other people the same people who paid to sit there and go <laughs> brilliant 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 the same they paid for all of it they paid for all of it so it, it, there's zero doubt in my mind that he is taking all of the free labor, all of the free everything, and he's going to sell it now to the same people who paid to, to create it and sit there and watch it the first time. And see, when you live in this delusional bubble, you can see the psychosis because in his mind, he killed but yet the delusion is everybody paid to be there that paid to, to set it up, that paid for the, like every, you know, it's like a, uh, it's like a parent sitting at the child's play. Oh, Jimmy, you're the best. Jimmy, you're the best. But the parents bought the school. They bought the stage. They bought the lighting. They bought the chairs they're sitting in. They bought Jimmy's clothes. 
but he 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 did a great job on the stage. What? <laughs> And the story behind it is even more interesting. It's like all the electricity came because Longbow Bear and Camera Bear and all these guys, they brought power from the line down because they're all like electricians. And so they brought power from our line and all these people did so much. See, and this is, this is what's sad to me. This is the LARPing farmer, LARPing farm boy, the homesteader LARPer that's all falling apart. But he can only describe an electrician tapping into a power line as, and they brought power from the sky, I tell you. Uh, magically, power just manifests itself straight from the sky. I'm just blown away. How? How? How, how can you do this? Uh, like, uh, this is the level of cognitive understanding of, of an electrician tapping into a line? <laughs> I mean, th th like, I just... I, I, who is this for at this point, Owen? Who is this for? Because I'm telling you, sir, this seems very, very psychotic to me. Much work behind the scenes to make this possible, to make, uh, to give us the electricity, building the tent, building the stage, doing the lights, doing the sound, Adam filming it, Coddington warming the people up. Uh, the band. I mean, you see what I mean? So no, knowing all this, what, what is funny now? What is funny about any of this? When you have a bunch of betas, a bunch of beta, beta boys, beta bears, the beta bear brigade. Yes, daddy, daddy, daddy would like, hey, and who, who, who's the ringleader of the beta boys? Coddington is he the one what's he warming up like warming up who a hundred people who paid to, like thousands of dollars to be there the same people you beg for money from every day camera bear electric bear cam like light bulb bear Chair bear, grass mowy bear, screw a tent in the ground bear. Like what? What is going on for real? I mean, who are these? Who are these boys? These men's? These beta boys? What? Hmm. For what? The, the, the my question is for what? So Fancy Boy can play Hollywood all over again? So Fancy Boy can play Night at the Improv? Like, what is it? Like, I don't understand what this is. It's like, it almost feels like it's not real. Like, I feel like this is not real. That's how unbelievable it is to me. Like, I feel like I'm the, I'm the one who, who's psychotic sometimes. A lot of the times. Because this is, I cannot wrap my head around this at all. It's very, very, very disturbing. There's no money. They're paying to do this for him. And you're not telling me there's, there, nobody will ever convince me that there's not mind control happening here. Because I do not know one person personally on this entire planet that would do this. I don't know men who move like this. I don't know them. The, the attendants, those who donated generously, it's so phenomenal to see it. And uh, it was very humbling to watch this. Like it's almost like make a wish. You know what I mean? It's almost like a hundred or two hundred people got together to make Fancy Boy's last few wishes come true. Like, don't you understand this is not real, Owen? Like, is that how far gone we are? You don't understand that none of this is real. What? How have you earned this other than manipulation, wizardry, mind control, and cult activities? 
what, called, what, Spells 101, Spell Casting 101. Because this does not happen in the real world. This happens in cults. That's the only place this happens. But yet he wants so desperately to convince people that this is normal. It is not normal, Owen. Special. At first, it opens a little slow. I mean, the opening is huge. Like, the, they told me I was canceled, right? And the first, like, five to... They told you you were canceled, and there's so much evidence that you, with Mr. Zero Identity, Mr. No Skills, Mr. Sell My Soul to the, to the Tribe so I can get a gig making white... P- portraying dumb white men on TBS, Sullivan and Son, charity case for whoever else you're associated with and uh what (laughs) they say it was there's so much evidence that you've canceled yourself and it makes perfect sense because mr fancy pants has no identity so i genuinely believe now and i have some information this is another video i have working on actually and every people who know know this so when you canceled yourself as a form of having some sort of a moniker that would give you an identity cuz you have none you're milk toast very forgettable and the young kids have no idea who you are the Anybody under, what, 30 years old, they have no idea who you are. And the last thing that you think is funny to to you is that, that it, that's not comedy to them. You have zero to offer. So I really believe you in your 147 IQ figured that out. So you're like, oh, I know what I'll do. Uh, my Monica would be the most canceled comedian ever, ever. And I'm going to be so unbearable and so abrasive every chance I get. I'm going to make sure I get so much attention. But nobody cares, dude. Nobody, who cares? I'm just worried about the people you're manipulating, the people who do not have the eyes to see or the ears to hear. Because I know people of your caliper will never, ever fade off into the sunset. You're going to go out guns blazing. I promise everybody listening to my voice. Seven minutes. It's pretty, it's like mellow. It's like I'm talking to the crowd. Uh, My voice is a little jacked up. And uh, it doesn't come out of the gate super hot. It's uh. It's likable and fun, but but after that 10 minute mark, the, between 10 minutes and 50 minutes, the the jokes, the stand up comedy as a comedian, like as someone who loves comedy, not just as a comedian, it, it's so good. And I wrote the jokes with you guys on job sites during live streams. Um, you know, you guys helped riff. You wrote jokes on job sites. You mean the storybook, Pinterest, delusion, the death traps you're building on land that you robbed thousands of people to buy so they look cool on Pinterest, but they won't last much longer than three or four years? Is that your job site? Using a saw to cut a three-inch round tree for 25 minutes and and sweating and huffing and puffing? <laughs> Like, is is that the job site? See what I mean? The levels of delusion. The level, it's just, it's a cake that just (laughs) keeps, it just keeps on getting bigger. And and, and it's going to topple, sir. I assure you, it's toppling. (laughs) It's it's an impossibility for it not to. Them out before I went on stage, but... I turned to my buddy who I'm watching this with him and I didn't even have any notes. I mean, a couple of color correction things, minor. It looks better than anything on Netflix, in my opinion. A couple color corrections, but you 
What? You, you're trying to tell people you did not prepare for this? You're such a genius, bro. And I'll just say, this is how I think, guys. Guys, this is how I think. Like, I, I don't even know. If, like, is this funny, guys? Of course it's funny, guys. I've not written one joke. Nothing. I, I just, I'm winging it up here. Even though I have a, uh, my brand manager worked for Universal Hollywood. Uh, and, uh, you know, I brought him in to set the perfect tone lighting backdrop. And, uh, you know, the, the camera lenses alone uh, are $15,000 to rent. So, I mean, what? what? I mean, I, 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 well, you think you're going to shop this around? I can't. Please, Owen, please. Please give us the chance. I want to show you what the... <laughs> I want to show you what the Covert Radio Tribunal is capable of. You just got to give me a chance, brother. Please shop this around. Please take this to Netflix. I'm begging you, please. Because I'm going to show you, bye. I'm going to show you. And, uh, and I was like, I can't believe this is the first time I've told these jokes. And he goes, dude, you reach virtuoso level. Like, and, and it really. See, this, this is where I can't. I, I ha See, right now, I, what are we, a minute, three minutes into this, and I just can't because I can't do this. Like, I, bro, bro, I live in a bubble, bro. Bro, I have a dude that's mentally ill who gives me uh, money out of his pocket every day. I mean, his wife had, needs new clothes, but he'd rather pay me, uh, a millionaire grifter, fancy boy tribe member, uh, yeah, he'd rather pay me, okay? And then, guys, guys, I'm a virtuoso, okay? I mean, he told me it's the funniest thing he's ever heard in his life, all right? And I know that. But the beauty of it is not one thing was written. I didn't even prepare. Who are you? Like, I just, I can't. I So I, I have to fast forward or play this faster because I'm not going to make it. And this isn't even what I want to get into. I didn't know this beginning was this long. Come on, please really hit don't. me emotionally because it's like, I, um, uh, I've never seen it before. I've never seen that ability. I'm sure some of the greats have had it. Like I'm sure Norman and those type of guys have had that. But, uh, as a spectator of comedy, not even as me, I'm like watching it as a comedy fan. I'm like, this is the first time I've ever told that joke. There's a tag. There's a callback. The deliveries. While you continuously see the, the, the factual evidence does not support your delusion, sir. What's wrong with your pupils there, Owen? Snorky, dorky, morky, chorky, huh? Script refill? What is it, the beginning of the month? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, your entire persona and, and history does not support what you're saying at this moment. So, it's a lie. It, it, it Circumstantially, it is a lie. Because you are continuously still using the same material that you've used for the last five to 10 years that I know of. But you want people to believe that you stood on a stage that a bunch of mentally ill people that are in a cult paid for and you just winged it while you had two cameras, perfect lighting, color correction, gamma correction, but yet you weren't prepared. And you have a Hollywood studio brand manager there coordinating all of this but you you want people to believe you're as brilliant as who norm mcdonald like what <laughs> it's never it's over owen it's over bro please start settling into that please i beg you for the health of you and and, and your family and all the low iq people that are giving you money every day before before this goes to the level you're going to take it, you're no different than Koresh. You're no different than uh, Jones. You're no different than any of them, Owen. No different than any of them. And I've proven this. This isn't an opinion. It's great. The material works. The crowd's resonating. I'm like, how is that possible? Like, it even, it surprised me. I hadn't been on stage in four years. And my buddy who, uh, who can be critical, I mean, we call him Buzz Kill. How is that possible? They paid for everything. They paid for everything.
I mean, like, that's how it's possible. <laughs> that's how it's possible, sir. He's like, you've reached virtuoso status. Like, you're a master of comedy now. Oh it's like, you can God. do these jokes for the first time. It's kind of like, um, and I know this might sound arrogant to gammas, but it really is a thing where it's like when you. No, no, no. It's not arrogant to gammas, Vox. And what are you going to do when he drops you on it on your head, Owen? Because you're never going to have your uh, virtue signaling to a self-professed genius, which is your your supply that you get from Vox Day. He is one of the last betas to tolerate you. And he only tolerates you because of unauthorized. Let's get into reality, Owen. That is reality, sir. Take the money, take the money out of uh, unauthorized towards Vox Day's cut and see how quickly everything turns around. Gamma, beta. Like, it's just, I can't do this, man. When uh, Mozart, and I'm not comparing myself to Mozart of comedy, but it's like, he could just write music without playing it once and just hear all of it in his head. And that, as a piano player, I'm not even close to that. It's like not even imaginable how you could do that. But in, in stand-up, I've been a stand-up comedian professionally for 22 years, and I never imagined taping a special without trying any of the jokes. You're so full of uh, no shit. Booze and, yeah, yeah, the no alcohol, the really supportive audience, the magic of the event itself. Don't get <sighs> me wrong, it's not all me. It was like everybody. That's what made it so electric. I was just the tent post. In the yeah, make a wish. Make a wish. Make a wish, Big Bear. The tent. And uh, a lot of us were hitting that virtuoso moment. It was, and that's why the dream we shared together was so powerful. You had electricians capable of just pulling electric from this guy. You know? Oh, my God. What are you on, dude? Are you micro... Like, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Are you microdosing now? Does he have any cows? Are you pulling shrooms off the cow patties there, Big Bear? <laughs> Big Bear? What are you on, bro? Electricians are now pulling energy from the sky? So Mozart, the Mozart of comedy can hover on a stage and off the top of his head kill. Is that what you're trying to say is reality, sir? Oh, my God, man. You had the guys just building the stage, like the tomato toss. They built the whole event, had music, had lighting. All of it was just flawless. It was just flow state. And it does raise the bar for next year. Uh, don't get me wrong. I had a feeling. Like, I can't wait for next year's festival. I'm I already bet. thinking about it. But uh, the bar has been raised very high. <laughs> and, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what next year is going to be. But uh, it could have just been everything fit into place. Maybe it has nothing to do with me. Maybe I didn't reach Virtuoso State. Maybe... Maybe it was just the way the story was supposed to go. Smart haircut. Maybe it's a dream. Maybe it's a dream. Haircut, BB, thank you. My wife just did it. But uh, I just want to let you guys know that uh, it was incredible. And I want to talk today about failure. Because as I'm peaking in my comedy ability, uh, homesteading is super. You're peaking at age, what, 50? How old are you? 45, 50 years old. Now you're peaking? Without the tribe's money. <laughs> It, 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 oh man, I, it's too easy. I see that, you know. This, I just, I don't know. It's too easy. Hard, and I see a lot of uh, people online projecting an image of homesteading that isn't real. And I am very fortunate that I get to, uh, I get to uh, fund it with other people's money. Like, again, Owen, let me sit up here. Come on. Here we go. Let's let let me chime in for reality. These are the people who are in reality, Owen. We we're in reality. Uh the covert radio listeners are very intelligent. We are here for the truth. And I'm going to do as much as I can to make sure any of the cult members listening to my voice uh, we'll hear the real interpretation of what you're saying. So go ahead. What I do with comedy, what I do with live streaming, what I do with magazines and all that. Like I None of it is yours. You've built zero platforms. 
unauthorized. <laughs> I've heard unauthorized has been under a, a, a <laughs> I don't know. Word on the street, Owen, is unauthorized has really been hit with, uh, well, I don't know. I'm not going to get into it, but I don't, nah, I can't. Whew. It's hard. It's hard not to say certain things, but um, you've built none of the platforms you're on. You're using them for free. Um, the people who you you don't own a magazine, all of the information is written by other people, and you take it and and monetize it. What does that sound like? And let's take this back. Ben everything fit into place maybe it has nothing to do with me maybe i didn't reach virtuoso state maybe it was your vision maybe it was just the way the story was supposed to go sir what's wrong with your pupils smart haircut bb thank you my wife just did it smart haircut <laughs> <laughs> see what i mean about the delusion of this bubble like put your, you know it's put yourself in in owen's shoes Put yourself in his shoes. No empathy, no ability to discern, uh, you know, how your lies and manipulation are affecting other people or their families. You can only see the profit and the and the the, the shekels that are coming into your family um, so that you can maintain a level of living, a standard of living that was paid for by other shekels in Hollywood. Um, so the delusion is, though, you're surrounded by about 50 to 100 or 200 people a day. Not that many, I don't think, but I don't know. I don't watch any of his live streams. Uh, and and all they do is is kiss your ass. All they, <laughs> all they do is say, like, who is... How, who, what male on this planet is looking at another beta male and saying, smart haircut, BB? What the fuck does that even, what does it even mean? Smart haircut? What, it, what does that mean? Smart how? Smart what? Smart why? Why? Explain yourself. Put yourself in his shoes. The delusion is real, ladies and gentlemen. It is very real. Because when you live in a bubble of people handing you money, sick individuals who are mentally ill and their cult members that are handing you money and possessions every day, all they do is compliment you every day, and you have a legion, five or so uh, ga- beta boys who protect daddy at all costs, who police everything else. So there's a filter, uh, there's a wall. The castle wall is ran by Cuntington and whoever else. So daddy never sees negative comments. Daddy never gets negative email. I guarantee you everything is filtered. Down to his mail. You don't think he gets hate mail? For real. Let's be honest. Somebody filters it, don't they? So the delusion, the delusion. This is a big business. This is a big business. We're talking several hundred thousand dollars a year we're talking probably close to a million dollars, if not more, of property, real estate. So nobody really knows who's really in on the take. But if there is a RICO case, if there is a class action lawsuit one day, we'll, we're going to see. We're going to see if the SEC does do an investigation and wonder why one person is is using a, a shield of 10 different LLCs that are shell companies. We're going to see when the IRS does an audit. 
You don't get to do this, sir. You don't. You won't. There is a tribunal. But uh, I just want to let you guys know that uh, it was incredible. And I wanted to talk today about failure because as I'm peaking in my comedy ability, uh, homesteading is super hard. And I see a lot of uh, people online projecting an image of homesteading that isn't real. And I am very fortunate that I get to- it's it, the LARPing farm boy who spends eight to 10 hours a day on the Internet uh, wants to tell you that homesteading isn't real now. But three or four years ago, homesteading was real. All you have to do is plant a tomato plant for freedom while handing him four hundred to ten thousand dollars. But now it's not real. It's see, in my opinion, is it's not real because the drones are are showing up now. The drone and he what he's doing is he's beating, he's beating everybody to the punchline. Here's what homesteading looks like in Owen Benjamin's uh, <laughs> grift in, in 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 the Larpington Kingdom. Everything's dead. The animals are emaciated. The animals are sick. There's no crops. There's nothing. It's dust. Proverbs 13.23, an unplowed field produces food for the poor, but injustice sweeps it away. Deuteronomy 28. 17 through 25. The Lord will curse your grain crops and the food you prepare from them. The Lord will curse you by giving you only a few children, poor crops, a few cattle and sheep. The Lord will curse everything you do. If you do evil and reject the Lord, he will bring on you disaster, confusion, trouble in everything you do until you are quickly and completely destroyed. That's Deuteronomy 28, 17 to 21. 20. We're going to pick it up at 21 in a moment. Do, uh, I get to uh, fund it with what I do with comedy, what I do with live streaming, what I do with magazines and all that. Like I You fund nothing, Owen. In reality, you've not been on a stage in many, 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 many years. That's a lie. That's a delusion. You do not sell anything of your crops, of your food, nothing. There's no produce, nothing. There's no farm stand, nothing. You are a grifter. You do not publish a magazine. You take information from people who regurgitate other information from the internet and you publish it and sell it back to those same people, Owen. That's reality, sir. I have a living outside of homesteading and I saw this uh, video that I listened to today and it just said off grid, off grid living is a lie and it's by Bush radical. And that title intrigued me because I, I, I was like, I think I know where this guy's going with this. And I really want to magnify his influence because it's true. Like I'm seeing a whole materialistic shift into homesteading where, um, where it's just like everything's perfect and you're back in nature and God provides and uh, women are all dressed traditionally and you're skipping through a field with baskets. And and um, I've never claimed to be off grid ever once. Like I'm on the electric grid and I've never claimed to profit off homesteading, which I don't at all. I feel like I've been pretty open about the... But you own several LLCs that are all geared around homesteading. Is that correct, sir? Let's pretend you're at a deposition. <laughs> Let's pretend you're at a deposition right now. 
Uh, Mr. Smith, you have several LLCs. I'm going to list them here, blah, 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 blah. Now, all of these would entail, and I mean, they, they've been category, uh, categorized under uh, what would, one would assume is farming, homesteading, uh, produce, cattle, meat. However, you have zero, zero uh, provable income, source, money, uh, any type of investment, nothing to to back this up. So can you explain the reason you continuously create these these tax holes? I'm sorry, these LLCs. Thank you. Failures I've had along the way and how I uh, have been able to do this because of my very successful career in comedy from before. Yeah, 15, 10, 15 years ago, 2008, 9, somewhere around in there, 10. It has nothing to do with the probably close to now, say, what, $500,000, $600,000 you've robbed off of many helpless people who do not have the eyes to see or the ears to hear. You've manipulated it straight out of their pockets. Has nothing to do. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I lost money, guys. I lost, and, that, and that's another video I have in the works right now with the real numbers. I've painstakingly gathered this entity's own voice, his own accounting. And we're going to go over the real numbers. And it's staggering. You know, the it's funny how the trolls, they try and paint a picture that I was never a success in Los Angeles because it's too impossible to explain why I would give that up for my family, for morality, for living. You were removed. We all know this. You did not give... Uh, You've you were taken out. You did not give up. You were taken out. You were removed. And mommy said that, Owen. That's another video covert radio has, right? We're we're gonna be covering that probably in this weekend. See, I have a lot to catch up on, guys. I have about 89 windows open right this second. And out of those windows, probably that's eight to 10 shows. Will I get to them? I hope to God I can. I hope I have the time. Become a Patreon. Allow me to spend more time in this studio. Yeah, mommy talks all about your removal from Hollywood, Owen. Right, yeah. Yeah, and there's a very specific reason and it's not the lie and then the grift and then the persona that you want people to believe. A better life, but I was very successful. And uh, based on what? See, this is why I can't do this. That's relative, Owen. Based on who? Who are you comparing yourself to? The imbeciles that you rob every day? Is that okay? So is that is that your definition of very successful? Because you were on an off, 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 off network <laughs> on TVS portraying a dumb white guy wearing a helmet, a, a brain helmet. Like, <laughs> is that is that is that the big cash? Cash cow? I mean, compared to who? Compared to what? When you were in Hollywood, like, I, I mean... <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> See, when he starts talking like that, he's lying through his teeth. Let's just go talking, guys, when, when when I was in Hollywood. I could afford to have land without any debt. Um, because people bought it for you. Thousands of people gave you over $250,000. That number came out of your mouth. And then you, those same people who were supposed to have access to that land, you threatened and told them if they show up, they're going to be dealt, they're going to be met with deadly force. That's reality, Owen. And build a house from my success and my continued success. This is all lies. You're lying to who? 
You think there's new people watching you? There isn't. This is a delusion. You were playing colleges when you left Hollywood Tribe Money Owen. Not when you left, when you removed. You played colleges for a whopping five, seven grand. Woo-hoo-hoo! You were playing colleges, sir. People aren't building new how like, I'm not saying you can't. Of course you can. But when you're making $7,000 playing a college every two or three months, like, you're a success, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're burning the world down, Owen. And I've been very old. See, mommy did mommy did this to him. And and I actually have I'm going to do I'm going to release this a little closer to Christmas. I have a Christmas at the Smith house. And um it's it's quite sobering. It's an old VHS movie. Um and uh I may just play the audio of it, but yeah. Mother, yes, yes. Um, little Owen always want he he wanted a a. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Yeah, it's it, we'll we'll get into that a little closer to Christmas. But yeah, go ahead. Open about that because I don't want people to get into this world without understanding how hard it is. And even in that, um, my life is filled with constant failure, and the chores are tedious. And uh, hey, Coddington, I posted a video on. Twitter that I didn't put on my telegram. Can you go get that? It's like two minutes long about what I'm talking about. And then I just filmed another one. I'll show you guys. But out of that is very, a lot of beauty. I recommend homesteading. I just don't recommend that you. I recommend it. I don't recommend it. It's hard. It's too hard. I'm LARPing. I sit on the internet for 10 hours a day. Don't be a homesteading. I don't want to recommend it. I love it. As long as other people pay for it, as long as other people are paying my bills, my electric bill, my water bill, my uh, my kids' private school, buying their clothes, paying for my vehicles, paying for my yard supplies, as long as people keep paying for my way through life, I'll keep LARPing doing homesteading. Just just tell the truth, though, and here, I, I said it for you. Go ahead. Get into it like your life's going to get easier. It's constant failure and I'm not even good at it. Like I don't, you know, half the dudes in this chat are way better men than me, way better men, way more competent. I don't know how an engine works and I'm very open about this. That's why people mock me. Oh, you never, you don't know how to change your oil? No, but I, I am a virtuoso at comedy. Oh my God. So I can get money to pay someone. To- You're a truck. Almost said it. Yeah. Oh, 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 I I know how to get money. Oh, oh, I wish I had my jar of shackles. Oh, I know how to get money. I know you know how to get it, Big Bear. I know you know how to get it, Wizard. We all do. We all know, sir. And it's one word. My Manipulation. Where's SpongeBob? Manipulation. Change my own. Now, that being said, I've committed really hard to learning new skills, whether it be that first fence I built with Grandpa Jack after not being able to make a ramp for my kids. Uh, Still telling the same stories month after month after month after month after month after month after week after week after day after day after day. But guys, guys, totally off the top of my head, the Mozart of comedy stood on a stage that about 200 people who are low IQ paid for and uh, he killed. He killed. Better, Best thing he's ever seen. Best thing he's ever heard. Uh, but he can't. He has no... I, I, it's just too easy. I, I, truck is monster truck. You guys remember that? And um, I do all my own chores. I shovel all my own manure. I had- yeah, speaking of, let me see something here, guys. Shovels always own the manure, huh? Yeah. How's your shit, Longo? And did that clear up? 
I, hello, I just wanted to make a quick video. I just thought it was funny, uh, something I'm experiencing right now. I want to know if anyone else relates. <clears throat> I, um, I never wore a mask during COVID, and I never would because it's insane. But that bled out, bled out into my life where I never even wanted to own one. And I, and I like, am in a dusty barn every morning, and I got a cough. And my wife was like, you got to wear a mask. And I'm like, I'm not a cook. You know, and it just dawned on me how ridiculous I, I am. And this, and this like goes to uh, the whole idea that there's no evil intent in a tool. Like I was resisting wearing a mask in my dusty barn where I absolutely should be wearing a mask or like uh, shoveling manure. Like you can get something called dung lung. All right. Not, not pretty. And um, because I, I didn't want to be one of those people. And because of that, I've had this like terrible respiratory cough. <laughs> it's just so ironic. Like the guy, the guy that should be wearing the mask refused. And everybody who didn't need to wear a mask was wearing one. And I just wanted to share that. It's just such a comedic world we live in. I mean, this huh? world really is hilarious. All right, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Today we're going to talk about the history of Coca-Cola. Uh, boring. Who cares? I do care about this shit lung. Deuteronomy 28, 21. He will send disease after disease on you until there is not one of you left in the land that you are about to occupy. The Lord will strike you with infectious diseases, with swelling and fever. He will send drought and scorching winds to destroy your crops. These disasters will be with you until the day you die. No rain will fall. And your ground will become as hard as iron. Instead of rain, the Lord will send down dust storms and sandstorms until you are destroyed. The Lord will give your enemies victory over you. You will attack them from one direction. But you will run from them in all directions. And all the people on earth will be terrified when they see what happens to you. Bechamin. The cough for three months from breathing in animal shit. Um, you know, I've had to stab my cow with a needle so that the gas didn't uh, strangle her lungs from bloat. You know, I've had to uh, figure out all kinds of shit. And I do all my own milking. I do all my own feeding. I run all my own errands, all that. And it's a form of almost like penance. Like it's painful, but it's so rewarding. But if that isn't what you want out of your life, don't have any ego about it. Just be like, yeah, you know, I tried it out. It's too much of a commitment. So I buy uh, milk from the guy down the street. You know, that's it. It's that simple. And there's no shame in that, you know, because I don't want because I can see down the road people having like marital problems or getting depressed. Spool Bear says I can help with your car stuff, oil changes, etc. See cows, master shade, tree mechanic. Yeah, I mean, my life is filled with really competent men and I'm very competent. My life is filled with a bunch of sick-in-the-head beta men who are outcasts from society, but because I've allowed them to have a voice here now and gave them a purpose when nobody else in the world acknowledged their existence, I gave them purpose to work and serve me. This is cult production 101. This is cult grooming 101.
It's all right here. The words are coming out of his mouth, not mine. At comedy, piano, community building, I can learn quickly. Um, learn what? Learn what? You just sat here and said you don't know how to do anything. But you can learn quickly? So are you lazy? Yes. Yes. I don't know how much more of this I can take. I really just wanted to get to this. <laughs> like, I I, I got to fast for forward keeping here. morale up. Oh, shut um, up. I'm generous with my time. Get the fuck I, out uh, of here. You know, I'm... It- People pay for... <laughs> you throw... <laughs> You've uh, you've turned into a 400-pound crying, sniveling little bitch because people weren't sending you enough shekels. There, this is on the internet. But you say you're generous with your time? When you charge people $10,000 to sit by a campfire... On a piece of land that they bought? I want anybody to tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You can't. You can't. And that is very valuable. Like community building is very valuable. Like what Schoolbird just said. Where he's like, I can hook you up with this guy, that guy, that it's guy. It's a call. You make a team, infinite abundance. And I'm from a world of infinite abundance. I view the- infinite abundance, but don't be... See, isn't that what Bertardia is, self-sustenance? And he's... I see, I just... I, I can't, man. This should not have been my first video back. I, be, because it, it's just... it's. It, this is making me crazy. Because I don't understand what people don't understand. What don't you Bertard see? How don't you see this? How don't you see this? Everything he says that he's doing and that you're paying for, he's now saying, don't do, I can't do it, I don't want to do it, let's go buy milk from someone else. Well, what the fuck is Bertardia then? Wake up! The world that there's no limit. We're not rats fighting over a piece of cheese. And so, um, oh, thanks, God. Let me grab this. And so that's how I view it, where it's like, and I understand how someone could say, um, well, comedy isn't valuable. You don't know how to change your oil. And I'm like, obviously, comedy is valuable. Obviously, man cannot live on bread alone. To be able to laugh through pain, to have a community builder, to have someone explain the spells of the world is valuable. And so I'm blessed to have a high-value job where I can take that those resources and put it back into my- You're so fucking delusional. It's sad. It is sad. Homesteading. And now, if you look at my land and my property and everything I got going on, um, it appears- If you look at my land, my property, and everything I have going on. Okay, let me correct just that. Look at the property I was able to manipulate thousands of people to buy me. Look at all how the perfectly staged horse trailer for further farm LARP grifting homesteading is in the background. Look. Look at everything around me that you bought me. like I'm I could be like really rich and I am doing well but I don't have a lot of savings like I don't put I don't hoard money I've had to work on that I always have savings but I whenever it gets high enough I put it back into the land I put it back into the property I put it back into you know what we're doing with um the specials and the community and all that stuff like I'll I'll put money into infrastructure that should that that's going to be coming out in court Owen we're going to see where that money is going we're going to see because you do not get to go to public platforms Lobby the public without public accountability. It does not work like that, sir. I will make sure it doesn't work like that, sir. You don't get to do that. Because truthfully, that you're you're hinging on Rico statures at this point. 
You don't get to do that without public accounting, especially with LLCs, which is all public information. And I will have every quarter you file or every year, however you do it, sir. I'm waiting. Because you will answer. You are going to answer. Trust me. Um, Because I don't want to end up hoarding money like my dad, like it's going to keep you from dying, you know? So if I appear to be wealthy, it's just because. Okay, so now daddy's hoarding money. A month ago, daddy's stealing money off of mommy. A month before that, daddy was broke. We were raised in poverty. I had to dumpster dive to eat. Lie, lie, delusion, lie, lie, delusion, lie. Pay me, pay me. You're looking at all my savings all the time. And, uh... And so I wanted to make some of these videos so that you guys know what you're in for if you try to get more homesteading, you know? And here's one. This is just about blueberries. And I will, uh, yeah, where is it? And I'm going to get into the ADL today. And I, I really do think I cracked the code on what, on, on the, the scam that's being run on Jews right now. And I think it might be up to us to free the Jews. Well, only God can free the Jews, but I think this special we're about to roll out is really going to help free the Jews. Um, okay, this is just a little story about my blueberries. Hey, everybody, I just want to show you some failures here so you don't feel alone if you're trying to get more uh, more home steady, more self-sustainable. So this year, for those of you that have been watching my stream, uh, you'll know last year I was really excited about blueberry bushes. So I traveled about an hour and a half each way to go buy each one of these. It was about 60 bucks or 80 bucks or something because they were mature. And I did all the math and I ran the numbers of how many years we get blueberries. And they're really, really heavy. So I dug out all of this dirt and put down fabric to keep the weeds out. As you can real quick, so all by hand, digging out all the... And for those of you that... So you took a shovel or your tractor and you dug out about a 20 foot by 10 foot area to plant blueberry bushes that were already perfectly living and alive and healthy. And then through neglect and God's punishment, you will not reap the benefits you will not reap the benefits and you know i can't help but ask like what is he going to be saying in another five years ten years when instead of blueberry plants we're talking about children or we're talking about a marriage it's not going to stop the loss is not going to stop That's what happens when you neglect things. That's what happens when you are undeserving, unappreciative, and you mock God. The Lord will strike you down. Your land, your body, your mind. I've never tried it. Digging out sod, pasture sod, when it's in summer is really, really... uh, time-consuming, tedious, labor-intensive. Remember how happy I was about my blueberries? I'm like, it's like 30 pounds per plant every year. And then I'm running all these numbers and and I'm feeling great about it. And I want to make sure they all survive. And I put down fabric and to help the weeds and blah, blah, blah. I think you can all guess where this is going. Fabric, keep the weeds out. Buried them, dug, hours of work, 20 hours, 30 hours of work. Probably 700 bucks, 800 bucks at least. All dead. And the thing about, uh, you know, I can, it's uh, irrigation problems, too much sun. There's all kinds of factors. It's ultimately my fault. And yeah, and that's one reason why homesteaders are usually really cool to be around is they usually have a high level of accountability. But can I just say one thing that, uh, that I found hilarious, infuriating? I'm really happy for the guy, I promise. But I got a buddy who's a lawyer. He's based as fuck. He was the guy representing everybody for the mask thing. Awesome family. We're really close with their family. He came over and I just gave him two blueberry plants. You know, and don't get me wrong. I'm driving to get the plants. I'm loading up my thing. I'm driving all the way back. They're heavy as shit. I'm digging. So I give him two plants. Both of his lived. He's like, oh yeah, boomers are going great. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I'm happy for him, don't get me wrong, I'm not an envious gamma. But I was like, so I got like 20 plants doing three trips, dude, they're so heavy and huge. I give them two, they both lit. Like his are doing great. Mine are all fucking dead. The beauty of uh, homesteading is you take extreme accountability. But um, I just wanna let you know I'm constantly failing. And that's part of homesteading because I see this big push, uh, especially in, in women on Pinterest and Instagram and all these places and YouTube of their perfect life where their husband skips around with yeah, with cordwood little shacks in a fairy tale land so that you can have a 
another uh what's it called um what are those called that you got kicked out well you probably couldn't have it maybe ames could uh uh a, a b b and b or wait what is that what's the thing you got kicked out of a uh yeah you know you guys know what i'm talking about bed or not a bed and breakfast a um b2 b something yeah i can't remember <laughs> their off-grid lifestyle and uh their eggs and their berries and all that and don't get me wrong like you can carve that out for yourself and we do have phenomenal food and i post all the wins but i think it's important to post the losses too so that you don't have unrealistic expectations uh Posting wins is like a single photograph of a corner of a little greenhouse with like, I, I I mean, I don't know, or a sink full of tomatoes that you could have got at a local farm stand. See, these are his wins. You can clearly see, and I really believe he's beating the drones to the reality about the, what's about to happen. You can clearly see it's desolate. It's desolate. Dead, gone, disease-ridden, dirt like iron. Um, I could have bought, like, a ridiculous amount of blueberries for that amount of time, effort, money, and it all failed. Not Yeah, because AIM saw something on Pinterest, and you wanted the LARPing factor and the pay, the photo op of, this is Bertaria, guys. You can't do that anymore, Owen. You can't. I mean, you can't ignore reality when there's drones showing the reality, can you, sir? You know what? I'm slowing this down. We're just going to play this out because I I just can't. One berry, not one single berry. So what we do now is we go to the uh, UPIC blueberry farm that's down the street, and it's $4. See, that should also tell you the the personal accountability of what's happening to his situation here because if you can drive right down the street in the same climate the same land the same water table and somebody has enough blueberries that they can sell to the public <laughs> you give the exact same breed to a lawyer whose plants are doing terrific, but you did not get one blueberry off of eight or 10 or 20 plants or whatever the number is today. What does that tell you? These disasters will be with you until the day you die. Deuteronomy 2822. Hours a, um, uh, it's $4 a uh, pound. We pick it ourselves. They're great berries, great people, and you keep it local. So one of my huge recommendations, and I've been saying this for years, and don't get me wrong, this isn't new insights. I've been saying this on my stream forever, that know yourself, like know what you want to engage in. So the best milk is your neighbor's milk. Raw milk is really healthy. Keep it local. Support your local supply chain. So you're not producing milk. You cannot grow fruits. You grow some vegetables. You probably buy the majority of the photo ops, that, that the spreads that you choose to put out randomly. And so, so the illusion's over, Owen? Is that what you're saying? No more Bertaria, no more Utopia, no more self-sustenance, no more these people. Like, what are you paying him for? I mean, at the very fucking bare minimum, I would want to know that I'm investing in somebody who has the time. He doesn't work. He's never had a job, a real job. He's never probably gotten up to an alarm clock. You would at least expect him to be able to take some time and have a knowledge base about what he's trying to sell you. So he's trying to sell you a utopia of self-sustenance, meat, cattle, food, milk, and vegetables, and, and fruit, but he cannot even create one edible blueberry and everyone around him can 
His cow is filled with disease. Injustice is sweeping it all away, Owen. Behold the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields. And take that however you want. Behold the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which kept you back, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you now, Owen. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. I'm going to say it one more time. These disasters will be with you until the day you die. You have a lot to answer for, sir. And I'm going to make sure, and the Covert Radio Tribunal is going to make sure we get the answers for the people. I'm Covert Radio. I'm back. Clearly, I put in an hour here. Yes, I got to get up. That's why I'm ending this. I'm going to work as much as I can through the weekend to get you guys as much content. If you'd like to support this type of media, become a Patreon. The link's in the description. This is brutally honest, fearlessly unapologetic talk radio. You guys take care. Have a good day. This is to the media, to your twisted, immoral society, and your communist government. We hate you all, and we are ready for war. will always speak up and expose the corruption, the authoritarianism, the tyranny, and the hate. Truth dispels lies as light dispels darkness. From an undisclosed location, deep in an occupied zone, you are listening to Covert Radio.